making a Stuart model steam plant part 77 preparation and painting the condenser oil trap economizer before rushing into the outer part of the workshop and grabbing the rattle can of etching primer there are some very important things to do first while on the subject of the outer part of the workshop I've removed all of the piping from the acid bath and the pipes are looking a lot cleaner than they did before they went into the acid bath Back in the inner part of the workshop, it's just a rubbing down marathon. It's very important to rub down the part that you're about to paint, particularly if it's copper or brass. Not just to remove any grease or oil from the part, but to score the metal as a key for the paint. Generally speaking, copper and brass do not take paint very well. The only paint that I've ever successfully managed to get to stick really well to copper or brass is the two-pack isocyanate type of paint. However, that stuff is not very good for spraying in the home workshop. You really do need breathing apparatus, and I don't have any. The 7.25 inch gauge Titch locomotive that used to run around my garden was painted using this two-pack stuff, and I did this in short bursts, holding my breath as I painted. You've just seen me using some Brasso wadding to clean up the brass cap of the condenser. Now it's time to apply some masking tape to the entire top part to stop it being painted because I want the brass cap to remain in natural brass. I apply the masking tape around the edge first then I fold it over and then apply more masking tape to hold everything together. This should work well. When threaded unions are fitted into a tank there are always gaps between the hexagon part and the tank and I don't like the appearance of this. There's a simple solution though just fill in the gaps using this stuff, it's called celluplast and it's cellulose putty. It's a kind of car body filler, but you can't apply it thickly. I'm going to dilute it with some cellulose thinners, which is in the cap of the can. This lowers the viscosity of the cellulose putty and it can be brushed on quite easily, as shown here. Please note, I am only trying to fill the gap between the hexagon part of the fitting and the tank. When I do get some of the putty on the hexagon part it's not a problem because it's very easy to remove with a cloth dipped in cellulose thinners. And just in case you don't know, cellulose thinners is known as lacquer thinner in the USA. Some people wouldn't bother doing this and they would just live with the gap between the hexagon part of the fitting and the tank. But on these large hexagon fittings, doing this makes it a lot neater. However, I've missed out one of the operations. Before I did this, I ran some thin cyanoacrylate adhesive into the gap between the hexagon and the tank. I wiped away the excess and now it's dried, I'm doing this. The cyanoacrylate adhesive is a great key for the next layer, which in this case is the cellulose putty. After painting around all of the fittings, I wiped the surplus away with a cloth. And once I'd done that, everything looked quite good. This particular fitting does need another application of the putty. The last thing to do is to apply some of the putty to the exhaust outlet in the centre of the tank. And just in case you're wondering why the exhaust outlet is in the centre of the tank and not at the top, it's just to make it convenient for piping to the boiler. There's a quarter of an inch diameter copper pipe silver soldered to the inside of the fitting. And similarly, in the lowest of the exhaust inlets, that has a pipe that reaches all the way to the top internally. The rest of the fittings are sealed with soft solder. And I'm not expecting any leaks anytime soon. And the economizer piping, which is also silver soldered, goes from the water tank to the inlet of the pump. So that part is also not a pressure vessel. Now, in the outer part of the workshop, with the condenser sat on a plastic box, which in turn is sat on my turntable, I'm going to spray the tank with this stuff, and as it says on the tin, it is self-etched grey primer. The acid in this etched primer is designed for steel, so it doesn't really affect brass or copper. It's still very good paint though, and it does stick quite well to copper and brass. Here we go, let the job commence. Please bear in mind I am not a professional painter. I can turn my hand to most things, but really I think painting is not one of my strongest points. 
What I'm trying to do is apply several thin coats. It's a warm day today and so it's good for this painting job. Nice and steadily I spray the paint at the condenser and I rotate the condenser on the turntable and continue the painting until I get a nice even coating everywhere on the tank. This is looking OK, there aren't any runs or sags anywhere. The final part of the job is to vacate the workshop and go somewhere else, leaving this to dry and harden for 24 hours. Stay safe and healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.